Okay, so for backplate and the tracking, uh, some of the things that I want to talk about are the um, the observations when you are um, looking at the backplate just to see what do we want to do and then planning the shot as to what do we have in mind and uh, look at some of the cleanup uh, that we, um, you know, we should do and just uh, make note of that. And in tracking, we will look at the auto tracks, uh, supervised tracks and um, measurement to keep the entire scene at the real world scale before we export out in Maya and Fusion and Houdini if, you, uh, if you're working with that. Um, all my tracking work is in uh, Synthize. So let me just go straight to Synthize so we can uh, cover the... Um, the both points about the backplate and the tracking. So regarding backplate, the one thing that I wanted to do is uh, look at the um, uh, look at the sign that uh, that we needed to replace. So if you look at this sign here, uh, we would need to replace that sign. Um, so just make a note of that um, that this is something that we need to do. Um, if you go forward with the um, with the shot. Um, the next thing to keep in mind is what is happening at the tracks uh, on the tracks. So I know that the train is going to be coming from the far end and uh, at the engine and I'll probably start the engine somewhere here and then it will just move along the tracks in this direction. So uh, it's important to have some accuracy uh, on the tracks and that's the reason why you see all these supervised tracks with the track numbers. Uh, there are some tracks that you see that don't have numbers for example right here and one right here and these are the automatic tracking all the ones that you see with the numbers right here and one at the top um, on the pole here and all the ones that you see um, on the on the rail tracks these are the ones that i created uh, manually so it's just part of the um the planning process uh, when we are um going through the um, uh, the back plate. Um, if we go from there further, um, we have the signs. So I, I had created these tracks um, for the signs um, that I would need to use later on in the pipeline. Um, same thing here for this sign. And then, um, yeah, some more tracks here on the track just so that I know that where the train is going to end up or, or the engine. Um, one thing that I did um, in um, uh, in the uh, coordinate coordinates uh, workspace is um, did a measurement of the track. So um, in the American train system, I think the standard measurement is 1.435 meters uh, is the distance between the two rails on a track. Um, now I don't have a good track on uh, on the rail itself, uh, but I do have some tracks on the bolt. Um, that were uh, attached to the track. So um, you see there are a couple of them here and also on the corresponding side on um, front of the camera. So if I use these tracks as the measurement um, between them and constrain them to 1.435, then that means that the entire scene is uh, roughly at the world scale. And that's what I did. So if I take this one uh, here and then Alt select the other one, um, you see up on the um, left hand side that it's a 1.3, uh, 1.435 as the um, as the distance uh, constraint. And once I solved using this constraint, the entire scene was um, uh, properly scaled. So uh, before we go into Maya. Um, let me uh, take the perspective view here just to show you how the ground plane is. Um, so I oriented the scene in a way that it would make it easier for me to get the um, um, get the train on it. So um, just to demonstrate that if I go to 3D object here and if I create a box, uh, let's go to the origin first uh, so that we can create the box properly. Um, if I create this box um, right here, right here, I'll come back to the um, to the original um, shot. But let's do. I think it's better if I do it in quad. 
um, yeah, right here. So I'm going to create a small box. Um, let me get the proper scale. Yeah, so let's say this is the box that uh, represents the um, the train uh, or the or the engine, um, and this is the height. So now um, I can take this um, object and uh, move it uh, in, um, in on in a direction. Um, let's uh, you know move it. Uh, in um not in that direction but uh right there so if i if i move this along on one scale one uh axis then it basically is properly aligned so that it will be on the track right so so that's what i um uh, i wanted to do to orient the scene properly and that's exactly what i did uh, let me just lock it so you can see and um yeah so so that's um now we can see properly as to how it's um you know it's aligned on the track and that that's important i think a little bit of planning here at this stage would help a lot when you are rigging and animating the engine um you wouldn't have to worry about other two axes too much you know um you can just uh, animate across just one especially because it's only going in linear direction in this shot anyway right so that was the thought process in um, tracking and, and then finally the uh, export i just have my uh, three export uh, scripts that i use over and over one is maya one is houdini and fusion and i just export it out and because i work with maya most of the time uh, my orientation of the camera is such that Y is pointing up, which is, um, you know, how I work for most parts. Yeah, so that's uh, that's uh, Synthai's part. And uh, in next uh, video, we'll uh, catch up on um, uh, rigging, modeling, animation, workflow. Thanks a lot.